a very warm welcome to all the participants of this first Satyam Yoga Conclave. As Chitra Bhanu so beautifully explained to us, this Satyam Yoga Conclave is an important aspect of the Satyam Shatabdi Yoga Yaga, the celebrations being held dedicated to the life and teachings of Pooja Gurudev Swami Satyananji. To begin, let us start with Shanti part. Close your eyes gently. Bring your hands on your knees in Jnana or Chin Mudra. Head, neck, shoulders, back, all in a straight line. Eyes and mouth gently closed. Become aware of the whole body from the top of your head to your toes. The whole body is relaxed, steady, comfortable. Now shift your awareness to your eyebrow center, Brumatya. And at the Brumatya, visualize the form of a brightly burning candle flame. And maintaining your awareness on this experience, we shall chant the mantra Om three times together, followed by the Shanti mantras. Taking in a deep breath. Oh. 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 Sahana Vartu Sahana Bunaktu Sahavir Yankaravahai Tejas Vina Vadita Mastu Ma Vedvishavahai Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Hari Om Tatsat Gently rub your palms against each other. Place them on the closed eyes. And after some time, gently move your palms away. Open your eyes. Aryom, Tatsat, Namonarain, Jai. This year is the year of the Centenary of the birth of a great yogi, Swami Satyananda Saraswati. Swamiji was born in 1923. Margashir Purnima, 1923. And he became a pioneer of yoga. Something which his guru asked him to spread the message about. And when we decided that we will have a celebration of Swamiji's centenary, then a thought came, how do we celebrate Swamiji's birth centenary? Swamiji was a very practical person. And whenever People would ask him, how can we make any offering to you? He would always say, help the downtrodden, help the poor. I don't need anything for myself. You help them, I will receive. And when he said this, this was not in a state of social uh, empathy or social service or social cause, but this was in he, because he was in a state of Atma Bhav. 
about this he has said many times their pain their sorrow their hardships are my hardships he used to feel the pain their happiness is his happiness so when you make them happy he became happy this is one of the highest state of yoga and even in vedanta this has been exalted so then we thought that if we need to celebrate the centenary of such a great person then let us try to do it by implementing his teachings in our lives and trying to share it with as many as we can and trying to bring the change in our life and others also so for this you i everybody we need to understand during the entire month we had a theme about enriched living and the theme of this satyam yoga conclave is about how can we enrich our lives over the month we have done some practices allowing ourselves to enrich ourselves when i say enrich ourselves what do i mean the philosophical question who am i is well known and the answer is also well known aham brahmasmi but can we experience that we cannot so for us when we say that i am the atman it is only a philosophical concept it is not a reality for us we are also the body we are also the mind we are also the emotions we are also the senses and in hidden in all of these uh is our atma which they say is our essence uh chitra bhanu i think there are some people who are having some difficulty in joining in they have uh, put some questions in the whatsapp group can you please attend uh, yes swami ji i will look into it thank you so then for us what is the way out the way out is to be able to enrich our body our mind our emotions our abilities and when we do that then there is a shift then we go one step further and a step further and a step further and then we are able to come to the higher levels of our being the subtle levels of our being and the process to do that is through yoga yoga is the way by which we can upgrade our systems our body our mind our emotions and when we are able to upgrade this then a time comes that we are able to transcend the mind and go beyond that is the ultimate but we are much before that our bodies are not in order our minds are not in order our systems are not in order so the first step of yoga is to bring ourselves into order what do we mean by bringing ourselves into order if i am required to perform a task then my systems should be tuned and aligned to that purpose they should be made capable to carry out this task 
this aspect is the aspect which yoga can bring in our lives many people ask but swami ji i mean i am already you know so old i am so my age is so and so i have missed the bus to this yoga replies that no we can upgrade ourselves at whichever point in life just because we are old or we are in our adult age does not mean that we stop learning we are a student till the last breath of our lives we always commit some mistakes and then we learn from those mistakes or we rather we are supposed to learn from those mistakes and then we go one step ahead our requirements in different times are different and that is exactly what we will be looking during this weekend there are three main stages in life childhood adulthood and old age but i like to call old age as being an elder or elderhood in hindi it can be known as being tapovruddha and gyanavruddha in addition to being vayovruddha we age in years but also we should age we should become senior in tapasya we should become senior in knowledge that is being an elder and in all these three different stages of life our requirements are different the requirements in childhood are not the same requirements as in adulthood or elderhood our weaknesses are different the weaknesses which we might have in one time will not be the same all the time so how do we rectify our weaknesses neutralize them that is what yoga teaches us yoga is not just asan pranayam or the practices but yoga is a way by which we can synchronize ourselves swami shivanand ji used to say yoga is the harmony between the head the heart and the hands head means intellect heart means emotions hands is action so when these three dimensions of our being are in harmony with each other are in synchronization with each other then there is a state and that is the state of yoga how can we achieve that in childhood what are our requirements in childhood because you remember in the beginning we said that as per our requirement we need to modify ourselves or we need to mold ourselves in childhood our requirements are different we are gathering knowledge information we are enhancing our skills we are improving the faculties of our mind that is the main physically as well as mentally as well as emotionally so that we are able to face the challenges of life many of us would think that learning is a process which involves the conscious mind alone but that is not true yoga says that learning happens at different dimensions and there is a very interesting example in the life of shri swami ji himself swami satyanand ji himself which exemplifies this perfectly you see when swami ji was in his guru ashram at that time swami ji used to do lot of karma yoga everybody used to do that and 
one of the karma yoga which he had was that he had to be awake the whole night keeping a guard and swami ji would do that and early morning as everybody would start waking up then he would go off to sleep one day there was a program and in this program we had different people making different presentations and at that time there was a group of students who made a presentation of vedic recitations swami ji had never been to this class of vedic recitation but as swami ji heard those chantings he felt it is very familiar he felt he has heard it somewhere how what when he could never place himself so finally he went to the acharya and asked that i think these are very familiar but i have never studied that i have not read it in my life how is it so the acharya smiled and said well my dear you used to be sleeping just in the corner when we were chanting the body was asleep but your subtle body was awake and it was grasping that was a very uh yuroika moment for swami ji he said oh that means that even if the physical body is sleep uh, sleeping the subtle body is awake and it grasps and that was the seed of yoga nidra which swami ji developed in his later life when he started the mission of yoga and yoga nidra today has been found to be a very powerful tool for making modifications within ourselves history is also replete with such facts in the mahabharata times they say that abhimanyu was in the womb of his mother and his uncle lord krishna would tell stories about how the chakravyuha can be broken and one can enter and abhimanyu sitting over there was grasping everything and it is this knowledge which he used later on even pralhad it is said that when his mother was pregnant carrying him that time she was in the ashram of a muni of a sage and there all the positive samskaras kept falling on her ears in she was soaking in them and automatically the child became pralhad son of a rakshasa became a devotee of vishnu so this became the first important point how swami ji said we can tap the unconscious and bring out the abilities within and during childhood when we are working towards bringing the increasing the faculties of our being then this is something which is very important and we need to use this of course we will be talking more about this in the session dedicated towards yoga and children after we complete our childhood the formal ability of learning assimilating then comes the time when we start wanting to apply those and once we apply those then we are able to make a dent in the society we become contributing members of the society we become the pillar of the society gruhastha ashram gruhastha the one who holds together 
the gruhastha is the one who holds the entire society and at this time we are need we are required to utilize all that we had learned apply it and as we apply it we become aware something is right something is not right something gives a result something doesn't give a result and the mind starts playing a tricks how to manage the mind how to balance the mind how to harness the ability of the mind to achieve the goals we need to have and to be able to manage the mind to be able to keep the mind in balance not be swayed when we achieve everything and not be down in the dumps when we have a negative uh, experience how can one do that that is the most important aspect of yoga and the secret is to do things as a duty yeah do it with complete involvement but as a duty to be able to work out our karmas create less karmas so that eventually you finish the baggage of karmas and this is also seen beautifully in swami ji's life after 12 years in the ashram swami shivanand ji called swami ji and sent him off saying go and teach yoga in the world in your spiritual life you have come to the station 40 years too early your train will come after 40 years so in the meantime what will you do when you come to the railway platform early what do you do swami ji used to say chana moongfali khate hain paper padhte hain gap lagate hain you pass time so swami shivanand ji told swami ji that passing time how do you pass time by teaching yoga yoga which is a boon to us for swami ji was just a means to pass time or to work out his karmas and when all that happened then swami ji left it all behind and moved ahead in his spiritual path because swami ji was he did not leave his home to teach yoga to establish an ashram to have disciples to have followers no his aim was very clear but his guru gave him a mandate now when the guru has given a mandate then it is the dharma of a disciple to fulfill it and that's what swami ji did and he established yoga gave yoga a very strong scientific foundation and after giving yoga a strong scientific foundation swami ji also made sure that he brought in the next generation and this he had done way before he started his work swami ji said that the work which i am doing is not cannot be completed in one generation you will need more so even before swami ji started his mission swami ji invoked a higher soul and brought him in as a person who can take the flag of yoga further that person was swami niranjana ananda who today very capably guides and inspires bihar school of yoga the institution founded by swami satyananda way back in 1963 and swami ji spoke of yoga as a science at a time when yoga was considered as religion swami ji spoke about it as a science he did research on yoga and doing so then he 
spoke about what are the changes in the brain waves what are the changes in your hormones what are the changes in the muscular tension what are the changes in the neurotransmitters and how it makes a shift within us that was practicing yoga and that is how one needs to lead our life facing the challenges using challenges as stepping stones to success usually we all want to have a very nice easy comfortable life we don't want any hardships we all feel we are perfect we are all the best that is no this time the adulthood is a time that we can observe ourselves in the same way as we take a mirror to observe ourselves we use the situations around us to observe ourselves how do i respond to a situation how do i behave when everything is going well it's also nice but when things start going bad when people start abusing you when people start misunderstanding you then how do you respond do you react how do you respond that is what is crucial and to be able to do that we need the help of yoga so that we can train our mind to use every experience to teach us something and evolve step by step step by step and if we fail if we make a mistake doesn't matter we learn from that too because failures are stepping stone to success this approach this attitude of doing whatever we are supposed to do then just doing what we want to do is what is crucial in the life of a grahastha people feel that grahastha ashram is the life where we can do whatever we want i am earning the money i am the master of the house i am in command of things i can do whatever i want no i cannot do whatever i want i need to do what i am supposed to do what i am required to do for that we need to study further that is the aspect of yoga which is essential in our lives as we work our path through the years of adult and then when we move into the senior citizen age that is the most important stage of our lives that is the golden stage of our life we have had so many experiences we have learned a lot and till now i was doing everything for myself my family everything which came into that definition of me my family my husband my wife my child my community whatever is mine whatever is not mine i don't care for it but as we become an elder our definitions have to widen hum do hamare do plus one i think about our myself and also more the time of vanaprastha is the time when we have to reconnect with our inner self we have to look at the world as one whole does the river flow and give water only to good people and not to bad people no the river flows and she provides water to everybody does the sun give light only to good people and not to bad people no the sun showers light on everybody in the same way we have to 
share our experiences, our abilities with everybody. And you will observe that in all stages, we are actually working on the evolution of the mind. People feel that once they are old, I have heard this many times. I'm just waiting that he takes me away. No, that is not how we have to, we have to remember that in addition to being the body, we are also the soul and that soul needs to progress. And Vanaprastha is that time when we can take a pause, observe what we have gathered, what is useful, what is not useful, sift through, understand, assimilate all of that and then work ahead for a wider good. Not just my personal, but for the good of the community. That way, we are able to connect to people. And this is what Swamiji did at Rikhiya. If you want to manage your mind, the best way, Swamiji said, is to reach out and help people selflessly. Not as a part of charity or social service. That is also good and that is also useful. But here, what Swamiji spoke of is different. I want to evolve myself. I want to train my mind. How do I do it? I do it by reaching out to others. Selflessly. Sharing what I have. And why do I do that? I do that because I want to evolve my mind. And that is the yoga of the heart. That is bhakti yoga in action. What is bhakti yoga? Bhakti yoga is connecting to that higher self, to the emotions and shifting all our emotions in one direction. How do we do that? How do we feel the presence of the divine? They say we are the replica of the divine. So if we are the replica of the divine, we have a connection with the divine. Why is it that we don't feel that? That is because the user ID and password has not been entered. And once the user ID and password is entered, then there is a connection which is made. And once the connection is made, Everything which is there is here. You store something on the cloud and that cloud information is not in your grasp or reach. Only when you enter the user ID and password, then you can go ahead and access. In the same way, there are Akashic records. The knowledge is there in the Brahmanda as spandan, vibrations, very subtle vibrations. And we need to connect with that and become aware that we are more than this body. We sift through and prepare for the journey ahead because the body is going to perish one day or the other. The soul moves on, taking the karmas with it, the samskaras with it. So this is the time. This is the time that we could sift through and remove that which is unnecessary and achieve what is essential. We equip ourselves or the journey beyond. And how do we do that? Not just by keeping our eyes closed, but also by reaching out. Maintaining our body nishchit roop se, certainly. But also by reaching beyond. This is something which is very crucial. 
because we have to remember that we are on a journey and the journey is of the soul not of the body today we focus only on the body not beyond the body a time has to come that we have to realize that we are beyond the body how to realize that how to become aware of that what is the purpose of life i need to slowly start going within that is the goal in vanaprastha we had brahmacharya ashram childhood we had grihastha ashram we have vanaprastha ashram at every stage there is a specific requirement of the body of the mind and that needs to be fulfilled and we can make use of yogic practices yogic principles so that we can learn from these we can gain and we can enrich ourselves during the month we learned that we can and we have multiple components we have the five sense organs we have the five organs of actions gnanindriya and the karmindriya we have the antakaran we have the pranas all of them need to be enriched and when we enrich that then our ability to receive our ability to process our ability to respond changes this is what is essential in our life no matter if we are children we are adults or we are elders we need this yoga will provide different things at different points of time but we need to know that we need to receive this that is the most important thing in life and learning about this knowing about this and doing our bit to inculcate these qualities within ourselves that is the real tribute we can make to the life to the life and teachings of pujya gurudev swami satyanand saraswati in the aarti when we do aarti for at the end of the puja there is one verse which comes and it says tera tujko arpan tera tujko arpan kya lage mera in the same principle o gurudev whatever you have taught us let us learn that imbibe that make it a part of our life that is the dedication we can give you who are we to give anything you are the person who has given me everything what can i give you the only i think i can give you is the effort the trial to inculcate imbibe those principles in our lives enriching our life does not matter if we begin late because this is not the journey only of the body this is the journey of the soul and the age of the soul is not in earth years the age of the soul is different so do not worry if you do not have not got this opportunity when you were a child the same principles apply and we can learn and we can begin at any time and you will see that as you enrich yourself there is a change which takes place the outlook changes understanding changes and there is greater joy they say our innate nature is sat chit ananda ananda that is bliss divine why should we be sad why should we be sorrow if things don't go our way immediately we are sorry sad no let it happen the way it happens i do my best and when i do my best the results will come 
let us not wait on the expectation of the result. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is said, Karmanyevadhikaraste, ma faleshu kadachana, ma karma falaheturbu, ma te sangostu karma. It is not in our jurisdiction what the fruits of the action will be. I tried to do the best, but I got something which was totally opposite. That's not in my hands. So, why worry about something which is not in my hands? By worrying about and spending our time thinking about that which is not in my hands, I spend time, waste time and am not able to do what is in my hands, what is possible for me. What can I do? I can do the actions with perfection. Bhagavad Gita says, Yogaha Karma Sukaushalam and Samatvam Yoga Uchate. This is something which is important. Karma su kaushalam. I can only do the karmas. I, it is not possible that I don't do karmas. I have to. The moment I have taken the body, I have to do the karmas. And when I do the karmas, all I can do is try and do them in the best possible manner. In the perfect way. And when I attain perfection in my actions, automatically the results are going to be good. But if I keep thinking about the results, then the quality of my actions is going to suffer. And once the quality of my actions suffers, there is no way that I'm going to have even a small chance that the results will be good. So therefore, we need to delineate from the expectations and focus on the actions. How do we do that? That is shown by the path of yoga. And the best way to achieve this is by the eightfold path of yoga which Swami Shivananji advocated. He said in, very, in the same manner as we have the Ashtanga Yoga, eight fold steps of yoga, Yam, Niyam, Asan, Pranayam, Pratyahar, Dharana, Dhyan, Samadhi. In the same way, Swami Shivananji said, serve, love, give, purify, meditate, realize, be good and do good. Be kind and be compassionate. This is the eightfold path. Swami Shivananji said that if you want to use the classical forms of yoga, you need to have a better control on your body and your mind. And in today's world, when the mind is so fickle, there is no control over ourselves. So, what can we do? That path seems to be very difficult. Is there a different path? This is the path which works for any and everybody. And this path does not begin with meditation. This path begins with service. And how do you do service? You do it with unconditional love and giving, unconditional giving. When we keep on giving unconditionally, then purification starts taking place. And when purification starts taking place, then automatically meditation starts happening. The same thing which we will be achieving in Dhyana. Yam, Niyam, Asan, Pranayam, Pratyahar, Dharana, Dhyana. You are able to achieve here even without doing any of those practices. I am not saying those practices are not useful. I am saying that we need to make this combination because our minds are not so strong as they used to be 5000 years ago. 
so this is how in the beginning swami ji taught us the methods to practice yoga and then later swami ji went one step further and swami ji taught us the methods to live yoga 24/7 we cannot do asanas 24/7 but we can do this 24/7 and the impact is seen effect is seen this is what is very essential and over the next two days the three sessions we will be examining how we can implement this in our different stages of life childhood or brahmacharya ashram adulthood or grihastha ashram elderhood or vanaprastha ashram which way can we make a change in our life how can we enrich ourselves so that our abilities improve our innate qualities are brought out and we become a more positive person that is what we have to learn and this satyam yoga conclave is a small effort in this direction we have broken down the entire range of teachings of swami ji into 12 units and in every unit we try to learn one aspect of his teachings this is the first this is the shri ganesha the beginning and by understanding these principles how we can implement them in our day to day lives we can enrich ourselves we can improve our quality we can make a difference when we make a difference within ourselves we can make a difference around us and when multiple such people come together then there is a difference in the civilization that is what we need to work towards to bring in a more positive healthy constructive civilization wherein the abilities of individuals can be upgraded from time to time this is how we can implement the principles of yoga in our hari om tat sat namo narayan jai ho